In this lesson, we'll learn how to select and modify the various parts of the curves that we create inside of Sketchbook Designer. All right, great. So um, in the last lesson, I showed you kind of a typical workflow for drawing uh, vector line work here inside of Sketchbook Designer, and I've gone ahead and done a little bit more of that. So if you want to open up the Lesson 7 Begin file, you'll be able to pull up this file exactly where it is right here. So in the last lesson, we learned a little bit about selecting vector curves. So we learned about this Select Vector Curve tool. Now the keyboard shortcut I mentioned for that is V. You can see I can come in, I can just simply click on a vector curve, just like so. And we can select that entire curve. So um, notice here when I come in, let me just zoom in a bit. We'll select, well, let's select these three curves right here. I'll just drag a marquee selection around those. Notice that when I use this Select Vector Curve tool, it doesn't care where each curve starts and ends. It's selecting the entire curve that I drug that selection over. You can see here there are six total control points or grips currently selected on three different curves. Now, obviously, there's we need a little bit more flexibility when selecting curves because maybe we don't want to select the entire curve. So um, I mentioned to you that you know there's a way to get rid of these little tails that uh, happen when you've got a curve that sort of goes beyond where you want it to go. And that's going to be this particular selection mode right here. This is called the Select Curve Segment Tails tool. So um, in, with this tool, I can come in and I can select just the curve segments and the tails uh, that they're creating. So um, you can see here by dragging this selection over those same three particular curves, we're only selecting what Sketchbook Designer sees as a tail. So with that selected, I could come in here and easily just hit Delete, just like so and we could quickly get rid of those tails. So we can kind of come through here and begin to maybe delete some of these tails, just like so. Now this particular selection mode isn't perfect because obviously each one of us is probably going to draw our vector curves a little bit differently. So um, in the case of this particular curve right here, maybe I wanted that tail to stay. So what I could do, let's just delete these right here. Let's come over and grab this tool next to it. This is called the Select Vector Segment tool. Now we mentioned that the Select Vector Curve tool, the keyboard shortcut for that is V. The Select Vector Segment tool's keyboard shortcut is A. Now, the Select Vector, or rather Select Curve Segment Tails tool, if you hit Shift A on your keyboard, you'll get to that one. So, uh, with the Select Vector Segment tool here, what this allows us to do is come in and select a segment. So, um, if I came in and selected that, that is seen as a segment. You can see here it's um, kind of the part of a curve that exists between two grips or uh, control points or even an overlap where there's another curve. So um, if for example, let me just find a good example here. Okay, so um, right here I could select just that segment. Now that was one stroke, one curve that I drew there, but because it's being overlapped by two additional curves, this is seen as one segment. So uh, back over here where we were looking, if I wanted to I could just come in, zoom in nice and tight, select just that segment or that tail and delete that particular curve, So, or that part of our curve. So um, when the select curve segment tails tool doesn't do quite the job you are looking for, then you might actually come over here and go for that select vector segment tool. In this case you can see that it's actually deleting a little bit more than I anticipated, so we can always come in and maybe approach it a little bit slower. Now you can see here, if I didn't want this particular segment, um, I can no longer select that as a tail. So um, you can see in this case, it's not selecting that as a tail at all. So like I said, this isn't a, a perfect selection mode. You still need to be able to come in here and select the segments themselves. And in this case, it was actually deleting a little bit more than I wanted. So we could come in and use either one of those two tools. All right, great. So um, again, feel free to use the same asset and come in and draw in your curves. 
and then use one of these three selection modes, or selection tools rather, to come in and delete exactly the tails and the curved segments that you want to get rid of. So um, eventually you should end up with something sort of like this in terms of the outlines for this particular shoe. Now jumping back over here to our vector layer, let's come over here and grab a, any curve. We'll just grab this curve right here. Now we do have the ability to edit this curve in terms of its appearance. So uh, if we come over here in our attribute editor again, um, I was drawing these curves with only two grips. You can see one, two. We can actually increase the number of grips after the curve has been dr drawn simply by dragging this slider up and you can see those curves are placed. Uh, I'm going to drag it back down to two here because we can also add additional grips manually along this curve using the selection tool. So um, you can see here how basically when I mouse over this curve as it's selected my cursor changes. I get a little green plus sign next to it. So I can come in and I can add grips just like so along our curve. Now these grips again are something we can grab again using our select vector curve tool and we can begin to modify our curve based on the locations of these grips. Now you'll see here the grip sort of pins it down on either side but um, if we flex this curve too much you can see that there is a little bit of a, a, a an effect on the remainder of the segments around. So um, not so much down here but on these two segments here if we stretch this too much you're going to start to see those move. So. Let me undo back a few times here, and we'll just get rid of these additional grips we just added. Now, when I was, again, drawing these curves, I was doing it with our pen brush, our pen tool. We can actually come in here and change the brush after the, after the fact, after the curve's been drawn. So I could come in here and I can switch that. Maybe we want to use a marker instead. We could just simply come over and change that to marker set it to whichever marker we want, set the intensity, set the size even, that's a little bit large. Whatever we want to do after the fact, we can come in and select each individual curve and begin to sort of manipulate the stroke that's being applied to it. We can even come in and adjust the color right here with this little, uh, this little button right here. So um, I'm going to actually switch that back over to our pin and see if we can't get it to match up with the rest of the strokes. All right, that's pretty close. Now again, this uh, stroke is visible, and we can always come in if we decide we don't want there to be a stroke along this particular curve. Maybe we've come in and we've added sort of a vector fill to this particular closed shape right here. And now we no longer want these curves that close that shape off to have a stroke color. We can come in and simply just click on this box right here, just like we learned in the previous lesson, and turn the stroke off just like so. Alright, great. So let me come in here and turn that stroke back on. I'm going to hold shift and add to my selection here. Uh, and we'll just click on that box again to bring our stroke right back. Alright, great. So in this lesson we've learned how to select not only the entire curve we draw, but even down to the individual parts of those curves. We've also learned how we can modify the stroke on a curve after we've already drawn it. All right, great. Let's go ahead at this point. We're going to move on to the next lesson, and we're going to learn how we can edit these vector curves that we've drawn with a completely new set of tools that we haven't looked at yet. So we'll pick up where we're leaving off here in the next lesson.